Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. When we'd finished off last time, we had just finished doing a lot of cleanup, and what we had left to do was to factor out this 25% capital gains tax that we've got everywhere. That really needs to go in the constructor, it's being passed into methods that doesn't make a huge amount of sense for just so it can be passed through the other methods. So I'm going to start with that, I'm going to pass it into the constructor, like this. All right, I think that will I see that will fail there. Okay, so since I'm passing that through there, I need to write another test here. Okay. So now that I've got it coming in here, I should be able to simply start taking it out everywhere else. And I have a tricky little idea that may or may not work. So let's let's see what happens. And my tricky little idea is that I want to get the uh, refactoring support built into Eclipse to do a lot of the work of this for me. Because what I need to do is remove this parameter everywhere. So let's see what happens if I just tell it to remove that parameter. Okay, um, yeah, okay, so we can just go through and do that over and over again. Because I gave it the exact same name as the field as I am in the parameter, it's just working. I think, yep. The keyboard shortcut for that is uh, Alt Control C, or on the Mac, which is what I'm using, it's Alt Command C, Option Command C. Okay, this is not going to work. All right, so I think we've got that all factored out. Now we've got the capital gains tax rate coming into the constructor. How does that read? Seems pretty good. Okay, let's fix up that next year. actually seeing that. Well, let's go ahead and add it. I'm going to cheat a little and do more than I really should because it's so simple. So 
I should see two tests fail as a result of this. Oh, well that one's, yeah, that one's not failing because zero does match zero. That's okay. Okay, now it's failing. The second one's failing. So I took, I did a bigger step than I really, uh, I'm supposed to following the rules, but, um, you know, I don't really, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> um, because the purpose of the rules here is to take small steps so that when you make a mistake, you can find it right away and fix it and not have to deal with five problems at a time. But this was such a simple little thing that I was doing. I really wasn't worried about taking a bigger step uh, because I really didn't expect it to break. If it had broken, I would have had to back out the test and done it one thing at a time and also look really dumb on the video. Okay, so there's our capital gains tax rate uh, passed into the constructor. Uh, I can take that off the scratch pad. Uh, I put in another little note for later uh, while I was off camera, just something I thought of during vi between videos that I thought would be important to, to come back to. Come back to this one later. I really want to take care of that primitive obsession. So let's see if we can make some progress on that. And what I was thinking there is that we've got this capital gains tax rate. Uh, it would be nice to pull out the concept of a tax rate because we see that dealing with floats or not dealing, dealing with integers that are a hundred times bigger than they're supposed to be instead of dealing with floats is getting a little messy. And um, I think that's actually going to clean up a lot of this code. It's going to make it read really cleanly. So I'm going to start putting in a tax rate object. We'll see if we can get through it in this video. Probably not. But uh, I really want to start getting that in. So let's go ahead and make a new uh, tax rate. I could try to factor it out of what I've got here, but what we've got here doesn't really talk about tax rate so directly. So what I'm going to do is make a brand new class, uh, write some tests around it, code it up, and then, uh, then integrate it with the rest of the code. Okay, and I think let's just make sure everything is is out there. Yeah, somebody told me you can do uh, test. I think it was Luel and Falco. Uh, test option no test control space. Um, to get the template in? Yeah, you can. Uh, it's not part of my my muscle memory yet, so that's why I don't use it. Okay, so is everything failing properly? It is, but it's not running everything. Uh, why not? This is something I really dislike about Eclipse. I want to run all the tests all the time. Ah. I'm going to pause the video here and see if I can figure out why this isn't working. Okay, I'm back. I got it to work. I had to clear out some of my run configurations. Uh, this is the thing that bugs me most about Eclipse. Uh, I like Eclipse a lot but um, not being able to conveniently run all the tests with a single keystroke command is really annoying. So, and it still isn't running all of them when I've got a test class selected, but I guess I'll just have to deal with that. So, now that we've got uh, our tests running, let's go ahead and do something here. I think what we want to do is we want to say just, well, let's start, let's just make a new tax rate and uh, pass in zero. So, and uh, assert that tax rate, or tax rate dot tax for a thousand dollars, or tax rate of zero 
should be zero. Well, that's a start. Now I'm passing in an integer here. Um, I think I'm probably going to want to do a float at some point, probably fairly soon. In fact, let's do that now. We're going to pass in a float. Um, and I could actually do a percentage object, but I think that would be going too far. So I might want to do that in the future, but not now. This, however, uh, is probably going to turn into a dollars object. That seems to be a pretty fundamental domain concept, so I'm going to want to do that. Okay, there's our 0 was 5. I can just hard code the answer to that for now. Let's get another test in here. So I think our simple tax is just going to be, you know, 25% of a thousand is 250. Still really not sure about using floats, or let's make it a double. Um, I don't know if it really matters, but I've always, I've always felt that when you're dealing with finances or anything where precision is generally important, uh, is you shouldn't use IEEE floating point math because it's not precise. Um, so I tend to use integer math or uh, big decimal type of stuff. Um, actually though, for this particular application where it is long-term projections, uh, precision isn't that important, but it could lead to obscure little failures in the test where I'm expecting uh, 266 and it comes back as 267. So I think I'm probably going to use a big decimal here um, or something, whatever the Java equivalent is, if that's not the right thing. Um, so, but I'm going to come back to that. Again, uh, this amount and this result, these are really dollars, and we will make that uh, class fairly soon. Okay, we've got this working. Let's go ahead and make it a big decimal. I'm not sure if that's the right thing in Java, so let's see what happens. Well, it looks like it is. Let's just take a look at this. Yeah, arbitrary precision signed decimal numbers. Okay, that's good. I'm going to apply that division after I have the big decimal, uh, and the reason is uh, that it will be more precise. Okay, um, it looks like we're about to run out of time, so we're going to have to pick this up next time. Thanks everybody for watching, and I will catch you next time.